Interstate 40. It sometimes parallels, sometimes bypassed, and sometimes sits right on top of old Route 66 through northern Arizona. Today I'm on my way to stand on the corner in Winslow, Arizona on old Route 66. But before we get there, I've decided to pull off the interstate and check up on an old friend. This is Meteor City, named for the nearby Meteor Crater. This place started life on the side of old Route 66 in 1938 as a simple Texaco gas station. It was later upgraded with a large souvenir store here in a very different shape. The iconic dome came along in 1979, later burned down and was rebuilt in the 1990s and served travelers on Route 66 and later I-40 for decade after decade until finally Finally, by 2015 or so, it became completely abandoned and derelict out here. Now my name these days is Justin Scard, and I got that name because I was in a band called The Scard, who used to travel up and down the highways of America on tour. And since Meteor City is pretty much in the middle of nowhere, we often would stop here to go, uh, well, use the facilities inside that dome. Back in those days, at the turn of the century, Meteor City featured a large wooden mural. There were signs advertising it as the largest or longest Route 66 mural in the world. Sadly, no trace of it seems to have survived, although a few of these sort of roof tar and wood teepees are still here. Some of them have seen better days. At least some of them survive. Another old school Meteor City claim from back in the day were signs advertising the world's largest dream catcher. And look at this, it's still here. Now on either side of this large hoop, there used to be these gigantic man-sized feathers. And the ropes were a lot tighter, so this hole was much smaller. It was much easier to catch dreams. Uh, than it looks like it is today. But what's amazing is this has stood the test of time. I was here in 2016, I believe, traveling across country. At the time, this site was still completely abandoned. As a matter of fact, I actually went inside the dome and took a look. Everything had been pretty badly vandalized. There was broken glass everywhere. All the display cases and counters were destroyed. Inside this old concrete dome, it looks like there's still a lot of stuff left over from its days as a trading post. Must have been pretty cool in its heyday to come in this giant dome and see whatever the heck was in here. It really sucks that people have to smash and destroy everything because you almost guarantee that the place will never, never, never be able to reopen as anything. So please, if you ever come to some place like this, like don't smash stuff, come on, man. It's just rude. Also, I think we better be going because it looks like Dun dun dun. Some guy named Satan was here. This is probably his place. And I guess he was really, really bored, so he left. But if he comes back, I, I don't want to be here when he comes back, so. It really didn't look like Meteor City was long for this earth. In fact, there were rumors that the dome was going to be completely demolished. Luckily, in 2016, a couple from Texas called the Browns purchased the property. And although it's sort of hard to tell from the outside, admittedly, they've been shoring up the inside of the dome and trying to secure the property from further vandalism. In fact, there's their Facebook right there. Only time will tell, I guess, what's going to happen with Meteor City, but one thing's for sure, I've been out here for about an hour and at least 60 or 70 people have stopped by and taken pictures. So clearly the iconic dome still serves its purpose and pulls people right off the interstate. To which, by the way, it's time for us to return. Yes, sir, I'm just running down the road, trying to loosen my load. And I think the best way to do that is to find some place to take it easy. All right, we've followed old Route 66 into Winslow, Arizona, where, don't get too excited, we're about to stand on the corner. So this is what taking it easy is like. Oh, all right, you got me. That's not the famous standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Although in my defense, in the Eagles song, you know, the take it easy song, the one that single-handedly made standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona famous, they don't exactly specify which corner. Today's extremely popular standing on a corner park location where hundreds of tourists stop every single day to take sick obligatory selfies with Eagles statues and with that flatbed Ford was chosen specifically and rather ingeniously in the 1990s to help revitalize downtown Winslow. You see, like many other towns on Route 66, when the interstate came and bypassed the town of Winslow, all the traffic that used to go straight through the downtown dried up, leaving the businesses high and dry 
as well. Even before Route 66, Winslow was a very important and very busy railroad town. In fact, the town itself was actually founded by the A&P Railroad, which became the Santa Fe, who had freight yards and maintenance yards and regional offices here in Winslow. And at the same time, the highway was being bypassed. Not only was passenger service dwindling on the railroads, but the Santa Fe was also shrinking its operations here, which meant that hundreds, possibly thousands, of railroad employees who lived and worked here in Winslow lost their jobs and moved away, like the employees of this place, the incredible La Posada Hotel. This place is absolutely breathtaking. One of the finest of the old Harvey houses, the giant, elegant railroad stops and hotels. And for my money, pretty much the only place in Winslow worth staying in. It's that good. After the passenger travel dried up, it was turned into Santa Fe Railroad offices. The building was pretty much gutted and then eventually abandoned. In the 1990s, it was purchased and beautifully and lovingly restored. Which will have to be a story for a future episode when we stay here again. But the important part is with this massive restoration project underway, Winslow began to seriously consider how can we bring traffic back to our downtown. Their solution, of course, take that one line from the Eagles song, make a park out of it. It's actually genius because it's right here on Route 66, walking distance from the La Posada and the railroad tracks, right in the heart of the old downtown business district. And as anyone can tell you who's seen the hundreds of tourists per day rolling through to take those selfies, the plan worked like a charm. The funny thing is though, if you were to jump back to the heyday of Route 66, and someone had had to choose an official corner to stand on back in the day, it probably would have been a block away at this corner of 2nd Street and Williamson Avenue, where not only did Route 66 meet Highway 87 and 99, but you were within really easy walking distance of the Santa Fe's La Posada Station. This was a very popular spot in town back in the day, just to the west of this intersection. This row of buildings here was a very popular postcard photo spot. Not only were there postcards taken here from the 1930s and 40s, but all the way into the 50s and 60s. I love old City View postcards like that because you can see that this used to be a Sprouse Wright's dime store, something that would have been universal to our grandparents and our great-grandparents back in their day. But weirdly, in our has completely disappeared, although we have 99 cent stores and Dollar Generals, almost the same thing, kinda. The next door building is very interesting. You can see the word Skylark on it today. But back in the old postcards, we could see that it was the Cafe National. I've got to wonder where that cafe sign and where the big neon sign ended up. They're so cool looking. Anyway, what's fascinating is if you look behind the Cafe National in the old postcard, you'll notice there's another building called the Skylark, the Skylark Cocktail Lounge, which today is this strange open lot. The original Skylark building is gone, but the name survives. Today, what would have been the inside of the Skylark Cocktail Lounge is now what they call the world's smallest church. It's a little outdoor church with paraphernalia, Bibles. It's dedicated to the country's veterans and surrounded in this beautiful courtyard by all kinds of artwork and statuary and these really cool and very informative panels telling you about Winslow's history. Check it out, there's the La Posada Hotel right there. Awesome. I wonder what the bar flies back in the day would have thought about their bar becoming an outdoor miniature church. I love those historic photos and postcards because without them, I'd have no idea that this first building right here was once the White Cafe and next door was the Grand Cafe and down the street, this skinny little building, which last served as a coffee house and art gallery was once called the Palace Hotel, which you can see back in the old black and white era. Now I find all this fascinating, but I know in the back of my mind, I'm well aware that most people that stop here don't care about that. All they care about is the corner. Well, luckily, I did manage to find one old postcard from the corner itself, and look at this. That is a dramatically different view than the one we have today. For one thing, as you see, that corner was once a Walgreens pharmacy which is really crazy, because I honestly had no idea they would have had Walgreens back in Northern Arizona that far back in time. It actually makes this whole corner more interesting to me. That what you have here as a backdrop for all the merrymaking and tourism and photo taking are shored up bits of the walls, uh, plural, separating that old pharmacy from the J.C. Penney next door. It's crazy to think that J.C. Penney is now disappearing from the landscape right before our eyes, but it stretches back all the way to the 1800s. I mean, there was one in every town. And now look at this. 
A lot of them are becoming like this, just big open lots. Before I quit this picture, I noticed that in the middle distance right there, you could see that big hand-painted shoe store advertisement. And that was right on the side of this building. You could see they painted a lot more ads afterwards, but you can almost make out where that shoe store ad would have been. Things like that absolutely fascinate me. You know, I'm not sure that this building was the actual shoe store itself. Maybe it was just, you know, where they painted the ad. But when I walk through a historic downtown or somewhere like Winslow that I've been a million times before back in the band touring days, if I just see old lots or old buildings, I'm like, okay, but if you can tell me that, oh, that was a shoe store, this was a hardware store, or that this building right here was owned by the famous Babbitt brothers, the ones that also had that huge merchandise store in Flagstaff we saw the other day, and you are quite quite prominent in local Northern Arizona history. Well, now all of a sudden, I'm totally engaged. It completely changes the dynamic and the way you feel stopping in a town like this, which is why history and particularly local history and the people who preserve it and share it are so important. Local history plaques can make a big difference and the people who purchase, restore, and preserve local history landmarks and buildings, everything from gas stations to churches, those people are my personal heroes. Speaking of churches, you'll notice this very historic church right here was in the background of that postcard we were just looking at, which is how I know, by the way, that this postcard contains a mistake. We're not looking east, we're looking west. Somebody made an error. That church, St. Joseph's Church, was founded in 1921, and the whole town is full of buildings from the early 20th century and before everything from the Old West cowboy stopovers to the railroad buildings all the way up to mid-century modern Route 66 stuff. If you take the time to walk around Winslow or drive around through the neighborhood, you'll find a treasure trove of just, I don't know, architecture and old-timey buildings. Everything from these sort of ornate Victorian-esque little houses, which represent that sort of middle strata of society, the family, you know, maybe the dad's sort of a manager, or maybe an office worker for the Santa Fe, to lots of smaller dwellings, and of course those old hotels where itinerant workers or the more working class guys could get a room. After all, lots of the guys who worked on the railroad all the live long day had to travel up and down the line and often really wouldn't put roots down, they'd just stay in a town for a few weeks maybe. Not to mention the hundreds, maybe thousands of cowboys, ranch hands, and Native Americans living in the surrounding area who came to Winslow to work, to trade, to go to church, to get groceries or sell their wares, all of which you can learn about just a block up, actually half a block up from the famous corner there at the very close, very cool, and very free Old Trails Museum, which I highly, highly recommend. Not only do you learn a lot about Route 66, and the railroad, the Harvey Girls, La Posada, downtown Winslow, and of course the local cowboys and Old West stuff. But you also start to get your first glimpse at the fact that this whole area was populated long before European settlers with a little Hisatsunome or ancestral Pueblo in history here. Ah, this weather's getting a little weathery. Now speaking of Native American history, I've been coming to Winslow for decades on and off on tour or making Random Land episodes and I had no idea that just outside of town is Hamalavi State Park. I had no idea how close it was. It's a location of some sort of ancient Pueblo people's archaeology. They're not big on the term ruins because they consider them sort of spiritually alive even though they're sort of abandoned, if that makes sense. Anyway, the weather's looking a little frightful for outdoor activities, but I think since I'm planning on being back in Winslow fairly soon to go back to La Posada anyway, today just might be the perfect day to check it out. See, sometimes I think I might be stupid or something because this is right off old Route 66 where I've driven before, right off the I-40 exit with that PP and a TP place that I've filmed before. And I don't know if I never saw the signs or I was just, I don't know what the heck I was thinking, but literally from the standing on the corner place, it took seven minutes to get here. I mean, I can actually see Winslow down there from the visitor center here. I can also see the storm moving in with heck of lightning. One of the rangers was just warning me it might be a little dangerous to go out into the main site, but I told him my middle name is Danger, which isn't accurate, but, but still. All right, they think I'm crazy, but I got my hang tag. And lightning or no lightning, I'm gonna go for it really quick. Please never follow my example and heed the ranger's advice, which I'm not doing. The wisest course is always to avoid being struck by lightning, not to go out risking getting struck by lightning. Ugh, doesn't look nice. The reason this is particularly stupid is because the site we're going to, Pomalavi 2, is actually kind of a high point, which of course is where the lightning tends 
to strike. Oh, it's so windy out here. If you guys have never seen my episode from Chaco Canyon, I recommend it. It's basically a massive, ancient Native American city, more or less, built by what old documentaries and history books would call the Anasazi, but which most scholars now refer to as ancestral Puebloan people, who built fantastic Pueblos and dwellings, cliff dwellings, all kinds of stuff, all across the Southwest, and were the ancestors of these people, who in turn became the ancestors of today's Hopi people. And from what I understand, a lot of the archaeology conducted here in Hamalavi was with the help of modern Hopi people. And look at this. Look at these buildings, these excavated rooms here are part of a massive complex built all atop this mesa here overlooking the little Colorado River down there and an even earlier Homolavi settlement. Without the excavation, if you didn't know what you were looking for, you might just think, oh, there's some rocks on top of this hill, but notice how all these stones are nice and flat. Hundreds of thousands of them, maybe millions of these stones, they were all used as building materials, just like Chaco Canyon, just like Aztec ruins or any of the other ancestral Pueblo and archaeological sites. Look at this. Now what you'll see here on the side of the trail are all these pits, these round pits. These were not rooms. These were holes dug by pot hunters as they're called out here. And not even amateur archeologists, but people just straight up digging holes, looking for pots, selling them on the black market. And that's it. They completely vandalized and destroyed archeological sites. I mean, early archeology span was sloppy enough, but these guys were just after pots. And there were lots of them here back in the day. In fact, just to the sides of the trail, you'll see thousands, and I mean thousands, of little shards, or actually they're called sherds, pot sherds. Before the pot hunters or treasure hunters, there would have been literally thousands of pots and pieces of pots strewn all over this place because all underneath our feet are hundreds of those square rooms. Sometimes they still had full-on intact pots in them, like the people just walked away without their stuff. Other times they were obviously sort of ritually closed. Archaeologists have even uncovered evidence that later descendants had come back here and left some ritual offerings in pots, they think. Out here, even today, just off the side of the path even, you'll see little tiny potchers. Look at that, that one even has some decoration on it. And these ones have been placed here, obviously, by a, a visitor, but you can see thousands more scattered around. It's very important not to take these home. If there's some on the trail or whatever, you can take a look. It's very important to put them right back where you found them and not to pickpocket the ancient sites. You know what I mean? All right, that storm is really rolling in. You can see down below us the Little Colorado River, which has a lot of spiritual significance for Hopi and even Zuni peoples. And then up on top of the hill here is this square depression. What we have here is an ancient, partially restored, Kiva. Now a kiva, basically sort of an underground dwelling or room, is usually associated with modern Puebloans' religious quarters. The Hopi, the Akama, a lot of modern Pueblo people's descendants of the also have kivas in which they conduct seasonal or ritual ceremonies. But the interesting thing is, back in the Chaco Canyon era, a thousand years ago, a lot of the kivas down on the ground were round eventually became square. All the modern pueblos have square kivas. So sites like this are really important to show the transition from those Hisatsinom people, the ancestors of the Hopi, down to modern Hopi people. I used to love watching old history documentaries where they would talk about the mystery of the Anasazi and how they had disappeared, which must have struck modern day Pueblo people who live all over this area as particularly confusing because they were like, we're right, we're right here. All right, we're way up top now. And look, all around us you can see the disturbance. You can see the rock piles just covering the entire hilltop here. I mean, for acres. There were hundreds of rooms here, multi-story dwellings where they stored grain, particularly corn, which they farmed all over the Southwest, and beans. Oh my gosh, it's getting windy. These were sophisticated people with their own architecture technology, agriculture, and the artifacts prove that they traded across hundreds of miles of the Southwest and beyond down into Mexico, to the West Coast, to the Mississippi River Valley. It's just an extremely different picture of Native America 
than you get from TV and the movies, even old documentaries or history books, really never grasp the full complexity of native societies. I mean, look at this. Take, for instance, this pottery. Now, I feel pretty sophisticated and advanced because I've got an iPhone, which just buzzed at me about a flash flood warning, so that's a fun one. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, if the power went out and I had to go and build myself a pot, I couldn't do it. Could you do it without anything, with just the tools you see around us? Could you come up with a pot, make drinking and cooking vessels? I don't know. Not only that, but surviving and even thriving out here in a balanced way, you know, or uh, the buzzword now would be sustainable way, we can't even do that. As a fan of history, I just really appreciate places like this. It's the kind of place you come though, and normally I would wanna sit quietly on a bench and contemplate and stare out over the landscape, but with this wind and the storm, whoa, that was close. And the storm uh, coming a little too close for comfort actually now. It's, uh, it's hard to do, and I'm sorry if it sounds to you like I'm yelling, I'm talking over the wind, which I only just now realize you probably can't hear. Hopefully most of the wind noise is cut out for you. But out here it sounds like we're standing next to a freight train or something. Ah, there's my car way out there. We walked all the way up this massive hill, and look at this. This would be the central plaza, apparently. So that kiva up there would be in uh, one part of the central plaza. We would be standing right in it at the hub of the community. The idea that the land remembers, you know, and that the ancestors are still here in a way is it's pretty powerful. Ooh, the wind is really picking up now. I know it's hard for a lot of us modern people to look back and actually be able to picture people living here before. And there's a tendency to sort of see mannequins in a museum or something and think of these people as primitive, but other than the tools they used, they weren't any different from us people today. They lived here, they lived, laughed, loved here, people slept here, they ate here, they worked here, they laughed here, gossiped here, talked with their friends, practiced their faith. Not that different. And when you realize that they were just like us, and then now there's only echoes left, I don't know, it changes the way you think. It makes you want to walk a little more softly and not too proudly on the earth, if you know what I mean. Very humbling. All right, I'm sorry to get so reflective there. Sorry to get a little deep. Maybe it's just the crazy storm coming in. Probably time to, uh, to push on. Real windy now. Getting very dusty. And I can feel the fat raindrops too. Holy smoke, it's so dark out here. You'd never know, it's still the middle of the day. I know, a lot of people just like to come out and have sort of a leisurely drive down Route 66. They wanna know that they're gonna be in comfort. Maybe they bring an RV, maybe they book all their hotels in advance, but personally I like to have a little bit of adventure and a lot of bit of question marks over the whole thing. So a day like today didn't turn out at all like I planned. But then again, for me on Route 66, that's part of the point. I'm now in a little bit of a race against time to get back to the highway and down the road because with the afternoon advancing and the storm creeping up so much, I'm worried that my next destination is gonna close early. All right, hopefully it'll still be open, but we've made it to our next destination. And here it is, the Jackrabbit Trading Post. Just to the west of Joseph City, Arizona, the Jackrabbit Trading Post is built right on old Route 66 along the old Santa Fe Railroad track. Some say in a former Santa Fe Railroad building. And since 1949 has been serving travelers along Route 66, advertising their business with a ton of small hand-painted mileage signs, and of course, billboards all up and down the mother road before visitors coming from either east or west would finally see the place and its iconic sign that left no doubt that here it is the jackrabbit at last every single time i travel this way without exception i stop at the jackrabbit trading post the problem is sometimes that can be in the middle of the night or really early in the morning and it's not always open I was worried about it today with the storm that was rolling in and just with all the fun distractions we had over there in Winslow. But finally, thank goodness, 
We've made it when the jackrabbit is open! Huzzah! Huzzah! Oh, it is great to see this funny bunny again. Look at the size of that jackrabbit. And I'm glad to see they finally fixed his stirrups. Put some metal plates on that bad boy. Looks like they've added another rabbit as well. A Volkswagen rabbit. Look at the ears on that guy. Aww. All right, it's windy. I am thirsty and under-caffeinated. We're going in. Oh, it's great to be back in here. One of my favorite places. Crazy to think they've been selling stuff in here since 1949. 72 years of sales. My favorite room here, though, is the small museum room here. It's filled with all kinds of epic stuff. Dude, check out this Route 66 sign. Original and epic. In fact, everything in here is epic. Look at this. Old cash register. The old jet spray cooler. Oh, there's something you don't see every day. Just the city eggs. You know, one thing I've never noticed before, not just in here, but everywhere, is how many rabbits there are. There are hundreds of them. Look at all these rabbits. Weird. This one's my favorite. Oh, he's terrifying. All right, I bought a ton of swag from the jackrabbit. I figure for people who can't get out here, I could stick some in the booth back home. And that way, you know, helps them, helps me. But my favorite piece of swag, and this is mine, is my official Jackrabbit mileage sign. That's the exact mileage, well, actually, more or less, to at least the edge of my neighborhood. Back home in Anaheim, 527 miles away. They also make big wooden ones so that other people who live along Route 66 can put them up for travelers to see. So people can go how many miles? How many miles? <gasps> Here it is. Okay, I almost forgot, but I still have some handmade Route 66 signs that I made in my garage. And I'm going to leave one in the jackrabbit for people to take pictures with. Tag me! All right, time to push on. See, the thing is, I have trouble on Route 66 now. Because not only do I want to pull over at every tumble-down structure and trading post, and not only do I want to pull off on every old stretch of mile, but I also have a tendency to get really chatty with everybody on Route 66. So over the last couple of years, my, uh, my, my times between destinations tend to get longer and longer. So if you're the chatty type like me and you like to interact with everybody at all the different stops, make sure you budget in extra time for uh, chewing the fat. Oh no. We're perched here just on the outskirts of Joseph City, Arizona. And look at this. This is all that's left of Ella's Frontier Trading Post. A place that long predated Route 66 and then ran all the way up till the 1980s under its last owner, Ella. The last time I was out here filming it, you may remember, there was still plenty of the building left. I really thought there was a a slim, but a, a chance that maybe they'd prop it up, you know, do some Bodie style arrested decay or something, but it looks like this was intentionally raised and piled up there. Ella's Frontier Trading Post is no more. This is one of the oldest trading posts, like I said. It, it, the building, I think, predated the city, predated Route 66. I have heard a lot of uh, anecdotal, admittedly, stories about whoever owned this place not being very friendly at all to travelers. It's always been barbed wired off, no access. Maybe they were just tired of the vandalism. That's why it's very important to take only photographs and leave only footprints or whatever, you know? Dang. This is the kind of place though where I wish they'd let people like me raid the remains, you know, as it were. Make signs or things out of the old boards. In fact, there's some on this side of the fence I'm very tempted to walk away with. This is one of those spots that was just a ruin for so long, I think people took it for granted. Like, yeah, there's been that ruin out there forever. It'll always be there kind of thing. I mean, look at that. You can see the log construction of that little remaining piece there. These were pioneer buildings right here. You know, for as many hardy and amazing people as there are, like the owners of the Jackrabbit Trading Post, for example, who keep it going out here. For each story like that, there are probably 10, maybe 100 places that just disappear and Never come back. Like Howdy Hanks over there. By the way, if you did not know, Joseph City, Arizona is the oldest Mormon settlement in the state. It was one of a number of early Mormon settlements and is in fact named for Joseph Smith. As a matter of fact, outside Winslow, way before the modern railroad town was established, they actually had a little city called Brigham City, which means this is the Mormon stretch of Route 66. Ooh, Ooh look at that. There's some horses. I wonder if they're Mormon horses. We'd better proceed with caution here. 
for goodness sake, somebody might pull over and try to be friendly to us. Ooh, look at this pioneer house. Pioneer Mormon house. Actually, all joking aside, this really does remind me of a lot of small towns I see throughout Utah and Nevada. It's a handsome little community. Lots of old people walking around, kids walking their horses. Whoa, 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 and what the heck is this? I've never seen this before. They've got their own Pioneer Museum out here. How in the world have I never spotted this? Oh, just watch the... Watch the barbed wire there <laughs> as you uh, go down the sidewalk. Looks like they've got a ton of artifacts in there. This kind of explains why I might have never noticed it. I don't think I've ever been here Saturday from 8 to 4. But this place looks amazing. They've got an old building out there, all kinds of old farm equipment, an old windmill, folk art everywhere. Look at this folk art cowboy. Wait a minute. This is no museum. This is a trap! Run for it! It's a Mormon trap! All right, well, I hate to leave the land of Joseph behind, but somehow, it's almost six o'clock at night, and this whole evening thing has really crept up on me fast, so it's time to push on just a few more miles, really, down Route 66 to our final destination. No, not, not death. No, no, we're just gonna head around these rocky buttes to one of my favorite Route 66 towns of all time. Holbrook. Arizona. It's a town full of history and mystery. Like, whose shoe was that? Epic roadside architecture and ruins, and most importantly to me, motels. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm pretty well done at this point. Sadly, I did not procure a room at the Wigwam Motel here in Holbrook, one of my favorite places to stay, and I have stayed here before. Nope, they've been so busy, they are booked up in advance for several days. And in typical me fashion, I decided it was a good idea not to call ahead. So there's no room in the teepee for me. Luckily though, I did procure another, if a more conventional hotel room for the night. And so I think this is where we're gonna leave off for now. My friends, you can guarantee we'll be back for some more adventures. Because although I'm just about ready to keel over at the moment, I'm so tired, I have not yet begun to Route 66. Make sure to check out our online store where we sell all kinds of crazy stuff. I've got Instagram, I've got Patreon with podcasts. And then there's the whole subscribing and liking and yada, yada, yada. But if you really like this show, what you can do is forward it along to somebody else you think might enjoy it. And in that way, You'll have done your duty. Which means at the end of a very long day, we can hotel and sleep well. I had no idea they would have had Walgreens in Arizona back in that time. Darn enterprising pioneer Mormons with their nice houses. What is that weird noise? Is that coming from this truck? What have they got, aliens in there? These were sophisticated people with cold, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Architecture. Were signs advertising the largest dream catcher? Ugh, I can't talk, wow. Run for it, it's a Mormon trap!